Hey guys, welcome back out to the Lots of Vintage Garage. Today we're in the shop with two of our very rare Bullnose Series Broncos and two of the rarest Bullnose Broncos ever made. On this side, we've got an 81 chromatic tape stripe freewheeling edition Bronco, very rare, one of 1,219. On my other side, I've got an 82 XLS edition Bronco. In the video today, we're gonna spend a little bit of time digging into the details on these Broncos, what makes the freewheeling edition unique, what to look for if you're out there looking for rare Broncos or you think you might have one, and same for the XLS. Towards the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you guys how these two Broncos specifically are very uniquely linked together in history and I'm gonna dig in on some of the details on my 81 freewheeler that packs a little bit more punch than they did from the factory. Okay, This is an 81 freewheeling edition Bronco. They made several thousand freewheeling Broncos in 1981. And in fact, that package started in 1978, which was the generation of Bronco before the one that we're looking at here. So in 78 and 79, you could get a freewheeling Bronco. Oftentimes they had the, what's called the tri-stripe, a couple stripes down the side of the body. And then in 79, they had a chromatic tape stripe. Uh, when they moved to the new Bullnose series Broncos, like the one that, ones that we're looking at here, which were made from 1980 to 1986, uh, they reinvested and, and recreated some of those packages. So in 1980, you could get a freewheeling edition Bronco and you could get what was basically kind of a, an outline stripe on the fenders, or you could get a tri-stripe. But then in 1981, for one more year only, they recreated the chromatic tape stripes. Those chromatic stripes were only optioned on 1,219 Broncos, and the one that we're looking at here is one of those Broncos. This left the factory with these stripes. These are stripes that we've had painstakingly recreated from a new old stock set of stripes, so they are the exact correct colors. They are the exact correct gradient, but probably the coolest part and one of the things that people don't know is that these stripes are reflective at night. Uh, Ford was always a big fan of reflective stripes. In fact, in the 70s, you know, the Boss 302, the Torinos with the laser stripes, those stripes were all reflective and these Broncos are no different. So this set of stripes on this Bronco are recreated with the correct 3M reflective material. Now, most of these Broncos were black. That was the most common color. And when you look at the brochures, oftentimes they are, the all of the brochure trucks were black. This one is fairly unique being that it is a white Bronco, one of only three that I've ever found that left the factory in white with the chromatic tape stripes. This Bronco is really well optioned. It is, it left the factory not only as a Ranger XLT, which was the highest trim level, it left with what's called the Freewheeling Package B. On the Freewheeling Package B, which they also had a Package A, it came equipped with the SEV Marshall lights. They put those in a terrible location. They only did this for a couple of years. 1980 through 84 was the last year that you could option the factory fog lights and they came in that location when you ordered them on a Bronco. So you can see the first time you're off-roading, off many times those were just wiped clean off of there. So very difficult to find. Those guards are the factory Ford guards, and that's exactly the way that they looked from the factory. So that was part of the freewheeling package B. They also came with a roll bar, a padded steering wheel, We'll jump in the interior here real quick. So the roll bar back behind the seat was part of the freewheeling package and part of the freewheeling package B. Ford referred to them as the GT bar. So if you guys are out there ordering Marty reports to determine if your uh, 78 through kind of mid 80s Bronco was factory equipped with a roll bar, it would be called a GT bar on your Marty report. The padded steering wheel or simulated padded steering wheel was part of the freewheeling B package as well. You can see the Ranger XLT moniker there on the dash. And then this being an XLT was optioned with the high back captain's chairs. Those were an option. You could also get low backs in a Ranger XLT. These have been redone with new old stock material in them. So very nicely done there. see how those stripes look. 
These are my favorite set of stripes on a 1980s Bronco. I've always been a fan of the 80 and 81 Ford trucks because they have the Ford lettering on the hood in 1982, like we see on our XLS over here. Ford went back to the blue oval and so no longer had the letters on the hood. I really like the look of the 80 and 81 Ford trucks and Broncos with the lettering on the hood. One of the trick things that we did on this Bronco, and I'm gonna do a whole video on this later, is that we put 15 by eight factory Ford wagon wheels on this truck. These are off of what people refer to as a brick nose series truck. So an 87 through 91 to 93 or so wheel. They are an inch wider. They are 15 by eight, say 1980s Ford Bronco or, or a bull nose series Bronco never came with 15 by eight wheels. They only made these wheels in 15 by seven at the time. These are 15 by eight that have been sandblasted, powder coated white, just like the factory. The way that you can tell is there's a bit of a dish right here. That's how you know that you've got a set of 15 by eights from the factory. If they're 15 by sevens, there's no dish. So when I put my finger there, I hit the wheel face. I don't on a set of 15 by eight. So this is a set of 15 by eights that's been that we had sandblasted, powder coated to look like the white factory 15 by sevens that would have come with the truck. If I jump inside here, again, to take a look at the interior, you'll notice the factory fog light switch, really rare on this truck. And then of course we had to do the vintage floor mats in these. I drove way too far and paid way too much to find a set of those, but it completes the truck. I had to have them. One of the other unique features to a freewheeling edition Bronco will be the double shocks that come on a freewheeling package B. So if you look right through here, you can see that this is a dual shock truck. If you ordered the freewheeling package A, which could still come with stripes, you could option chromatic stripes independently of the freewheeling package. So one of the things that people uh, can get confused about is you did not always get these stripes when you ordered a freewheeler and you could order these stripes without ordering a freewheeling package. They are a standalone option, although they are very common on a freewheeler because you would get a credit on ordering these stripes if you ordered the freewheeling package. So the stripes are slightly cheaper when you ordered the freewheeling package with the chromatic stripes. Okay, moving on to the XLS edition. So this came out in 1982, the XLS series. It was only made for two years, 1982 and 1983. They made them in several different colors. Red is a color that you'll see often in the brochures and on the different advertisements Ford did back in the day. They were also common to find in black. And the other kind of third most common color, maybe not quite in that order, is blue. We happen to have one of those as well that will be going into restoration here shortly. Uh, but they also made them in several other colors. You'll see them in silver, white. We have found copper colored trucks as well, a tan. So they made the XLS edition in several different unique colors. If you're out there and you find an XLS in a rare color, please comment below. We would love to hear about it. Uh, same for a freewheeling edition. We love those trucks. So if you've got one, if you're working on restoring one, uh, we'd love to have you comment below and, and would love to learn more about it. What makes the XLS unique is in kind of the first thing that stands out is the blackout bumper hood and trim treatment. This was the only Bronco up until the Night Series Bronco to get the blackout uh, treatment package. And so that was kind of new back in the day. They, the, the blackout, uh, kind of the murdered out look is more common today than it was back then, but this was one of the very first Fords to leave the factory with a full blackout treatment like this. So from the factory, these came with black bumpers, front and back, factory mirrors that were blacked out, the door handles, and all of the windshield trim. So as you're looking through this Bronco, you can see that all of that is black. Now, as part of the XLS package as well, they would also receive kind of this black shadow around the side windows. And then of course, the XLS stripes there. The last piece that completes 
an XLS Bronco is the unique dash finish. So they had a silver dash and silver radio bezel with XLS right there in the center. And then also would have a unique to the XLS series silver steering wheel center. This XLS Bronco is really highly optioned, which is actually pretty uncommon for these. When they moved into 1982 and they moved into the XLS series, uh, they tended to be lower option truck, trucks than the freewheelers, where the freewheelers, for whatever reason, were, were oftentimes very highly optioned. If you find an XLS, there's a good chance that it has very few options, that it has the base seats. Um, oftentimes they'll have a six cylinder in them. Oftentimes they are just very low option truck. This truck is really unique because it's extremely highly optioned. It has power locks, power windows. It was optioned with the highest trim seats that you could get, which was the dual captain's chairs. We had these redone in all new old stock material, including the, the correct uh, vinyl, cloth, and checkered insert that was correct for a 1982. So that's all been redone correctly. So that makes this Bronco really, really unique. So if you have an XLS, you have a really unique and a really uncommon Bronco. These stripes are getting incredibly hard to find. So we had just like we had the stripes remade for our freewheeling edition with the correct 3M uh, material. We also had the correct XLS stripes remade for this series of Broncos. So we were fortunate to be able to source a new old stock set of stripes. Nobody remakes these right now. We have begun remaking them at least for in this colorway for the red Broncos. And so if you check it out here, uh, this, is the, this is the exact correct stripe that should come on these trucks. Okay, so we mentioned that our 81 chromatic freewheeling edition Bronco packs a little bit more punch than it did from the factory. So we're gonna show you that now. I'm gonna do a whole separate video on this truck and on the drivetrain in it. <clears throat> but this truck here, we had completely restored, thanks to our friends at Firehouse Vintage Broncos in North Carolina. They were able to do the cosmetic and interior restoration on this truck, but they were also able to do the world's first Godzilla swap into a Bullnose Series Bronco. So this is a 7.3 liter, gas engine out of a Ford, out of a 2021 Ford Super Duty. Right now it's tuned to about 450, 500 horsepower. It fits right in here. You can actually see that we're running the, fac the factory accessory drive on the truck still. It runs great. It is wildly powerful. I'd almost say that the thing is violent. It is really fast. It sounds amazing. It's backed by a 6R80 transmission. We decided not to stay with the 10 speed in this just because I don't like how much the, the 10 speeds tend to shift. Uh, so I specified that I wanted a 6R80 in it, the six speed transmission. So that's what this has. It drives really, really well and is about three times more power than this truck would have had leaving the factory. Okay, and so I said at the beginning of the video that these two Broncos are linked in a really, really unique way. Well, that way that they are linked is they were both sold new at the same dealership one year apart from each other. Both of these trucks were customer orders, what's called a retail order on a Marty report if you order one of those for your trucks. That means that it was a sold order that someone came in, specified the exact combination they wanted on their vehicle, and that Ford placed that order as a sold unit. So both of these are retail orders. They were both sold new at Don McMillan Ford in Houston, Texas. So super cool. They were sold about one year apart. It's possible with how highly specced they are and the fact that they both have red interiors, maybe they were even sold to the same individual. Maybe they were sold to somebody you know. So if you had a, uh, a relative, if you happen to live in Houston at the time and you remember one of these trucks being at Don McMillan Ford, would love to hear that from you. But the other cool thing that I would love to find, so if anybody has any of these laying around, if you have an old Don McMillan Ford key fob or anything from that dealership, I'd love to find it. I keep my eyes out on eBay, uh, but I don't find anything there. So comment below if you have anything that would be pertinent to that dealership around 1981, 1982. I hope you enjoyed these trucks today. We're gonna do a couple more videos where we detail how to identify the different Ford wagon wheels. And then we'll do a full video breakdown on the drivetrain in our 81 freewheeler and, and go for a ride in that. So if you haven't already, subscribe below, stay tuned for more content, and thanks for following.